Christ Jesus has triumphed o'er Satan and death, and now praise his name, I am free, although he has gone to his father's right hand, may in me. Greetings, friends. This is Pastor R. Norheim presenting the Christmas Gospel in Sermon and Song, sponsored by the Lutheran Gospel Out Association, Pasadena, California, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who became Son of Man on that first Christmas Eve when the angels sang, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. This is Norheim, and I sing first a song we always sang on Christmas Eve in our childhood homes. Then it was, Ye are so glad that you liquidle. Now it is, I am so glad each Christmas Eve. Now, Lord, that we know that this is so true, we pray that it shall be true to experience of all who listen, for there undoubtedly are many who celebrate Christmas who do not truly celebrate the coming of Christ into their hearts and homes. We pray for Christmas revival, where there shall be those bowing at the foot of the cross, realizing that he that came and was the babe in Bethlehem was destined to go to the cross. It was God's eternal plan of salvation. There is no other. Through the blood of Christ, salvation was to be brought to a sinful world in order that we might celebrate thy coming and thy second coming, who, uh, which we believe is soon, in the clouds of the sky. Grant we shall be a prepared people. We ask it in thy precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus lay, 
They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Yeah. 
And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. to thank our many friends who have already sent in your Christmas offering to keep the Lutheran Gospel Hour on the air. Thanks, too, for lovely Christmas cards and greetings. Deeply appreciated. You listeners may be wondering uh, what our address is, so it's Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office, Box 12, Pasadena, California, zip code 91102. In Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office, Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7K3K4. That is Lutheran Gospel Hour, Box 12, Pasadena, California, 91102. In Canada, Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7K3K4.
And now before my Christmas message, Lauren Whitney brings us his annual Christmas organ number. I want to call to your attention a few thoughts in harmony with the message God has given us at this time of the year. My subject is Jesus, the light of the world. In the Christmas Gospel of St. Luke, second chapter, we read the eighth and ninth verses. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. In these two verses, we find the two greatest contrasts found any place in the Bible that God certainly has a message to give us through them. They are night and light, two words so similar that the only difference in spelling is in the first letter. And yet the two are as unlike one another as the kingdom of sin and the kingdom of God. On the very first day of creation, God divided the light from the darkness, and God and called the light day, and the darkness he called night. After the fall of Adam and Eve, God used these two opposites to teach us, as it were, by object lessons, the difference between the night of sin and the light of God. Turning to the New Testament, we find that God chose a similar setting for the coming to earth of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. We read that the shepherds were watching their flocks by night, and then, lo, all of a sudden, a bright light burst forth upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Just how dark that night was, none of us know, but it was symbolical of the gross, pitch darkness of sin that lay heavily over the earth. Isaiah, in predicting this event, said, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death Upon them hath the light shined. Time will fail us to dwell long here in describing the various phases of darkness that the world lay in, in the fullness of time when Jesus came, a darkness of superstition, fear, ignorance of spiritual things, 
a darkness of deception so deep that the devil had the world under his power, doing his biddings, living in the lusts of the flesh. We'd think that people living under such terrible conditions would to the last man accept the glorious light of the gospel in Jesus Christ. But if you turn with me to the Gospel of John, the third chapter, and the 19th verse, we will find that Jesus is telling Nicodemus in the dark of the night these words, Light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. His words were true regarding those who lived then. They are equally true today. Though Jesus left this world in a visible way on Ascension Day, he is nevertheless present in his word, in the sacraments, and in a spiritual way. He is the light also today, but so few, so very few want to walk in his light. And he told us the reason. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. The devil has so mastered the art of painting sin so as to make it appeal to the natural heart, and he gets such wholehearted support from his followers that sinners choose to walk in darkness. They choose to take chances. They choose to drive ahead full speed in the dark in spite of Christ's and the Christian's warnings that the wages of sin is death. But while the darkness of intentional, obstinate Christ rejection is appalling in our days, yet there is a darkness even deeper than that, believe it or not, and that's the midnight blackout of self-righteousness where man argues against his conscience, against God's word, against Christian preaching, into a state where he is satisfied with the best that he himself can do to save his soul. Scripture's requisite, ye must be born again, means to them to try and remake their life, to promise to be better from now on. But God's word says Christ died for the ungodly, not for good people so-called. And not until these good folks see themselves lost and undone, fit candidates for hell, not until then can Jesus be the light of the soul. But thank God, heaven is going to be filled with such people one day. Their testimony will be, Praise to God who delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Our song will be blessing and honor and glory and power unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. It will not be glory be to me because I was so good that I got here at last. Oh, no. Perhaps some of my listeners are deeply puzzled at this point. Your lethargy... Your false security has been shaken by the Holy Spirit's application of the Word of God. If you doubt these things, get out your Bible and read Romans chapter 3, chapter 8, Ephesians chapter 2, or any passage the Holy Spirit may direct you to. If I were wrong, I wouldn't urge you to search the Scriptures. May the light of Jesus also fill your darkened mind and soul and give you a real blessed Christmas. Moody tells how the devil blinded the eyes of a seeking soul. She came to him saying, Master Moody, I want to be saved. I wish you would tell me how. The tears were trickling down her cheeks and she said, You do not know how I want to be saved. Moody said, My friend, you would know how to take a gift, wouldn't you? If I offered you my Bible, you would know how to take it, would you not? Oh, yes, sir, she replied, I should. Salvation, he continued, is a gift. And just as you would take a present, you should take God's present. God's present to you is his Son from heaven. Receive him. She said, Mr. Moody, is that all I have to do? Yes, that is all you can do. You receive him first. But won't I have to ask for him? You need not do that. What is the use of asking for what God is offering? You have nothing to do but to take it. God says, there is my son, take him. 
The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Some think, continued Moody, that, they, that they'd like to take Jesus, but there's too much to give up. Now, God does not come and ask anyone to give up anything. The first thing God wants you to do is to take. And after you have taken the new life and have a new nature, old things pass away and all things become new. May God help you to believe now and to receive the gospel this moment. It's for you. Take it. Believe it. And you are saved. End of quote. And as you notice, this quote was from D.L. Moody. And it's the same today. My dear friend, you that are in darkness, receive the light. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Christ died for the ungodly. At this Christmas time, you may know the joy of heavenly light in your sin-darkened soul that translates you out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. God bless you to receive Him this hour. Amen. Oh, will you give heed to this message today And to your convictions be true There's danger and death in a further delay My friend, he is now calling you Make room for the Savior today. Make room for the Savior today. If you would win mansions in heaven, make Room for the Savior today. You have been listening to the Christmas broadcast of the Lutheran Gospel Hour of Pasadena, California. All correspondence should be sent to Post Office Box 12. Pasadena, California. Listeners in Canada should write to Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. This is Pastor R. Norheim inviting you to tune in again next week, same time, same station.